Hey everybody, Mental Fox here. Welcome back to another episode of my playthrough of Skyrim. Thank you so much for joining me again. There's something about Farkas. Uh, I, I was just looking at him with the game loaded up. It, you know, it kind of fades in. And Farkas is just standing there looking at me, and I'm like, what does he look like to me? And he looks to me like a World of Warcraft character. I've never played World of Warcraft, but I've seen plenty of videos and commercials. I don't know. And to, he just looks like a World of Warcraft character to me. I don't know why he does, but uh, that's just what came to mind when I was trying to think of what it is that uh, I uh, noticed about him. Um, something else I've noticed is that it doesn't look like it's saving my field of view the way I want. Uh, so I'm going to change it back to 90. Um, I feel like 100 might be a bit much. Um, I think some of you guys said it was a little too fisheye. Uh, when I go into 100, but the the default is a little claustrophobic for me, and uh, I noticed in the last episode, and and just thankfully remembered to check it this time. But I thought that it's supposed to save the field of view um, as I save my game, but I, it's kind of looking like that's not the case, and it's not really something I want to set every time. But we'll see what happens. We'll just see what happens when we go forward. Uh, speaking of going forward, um, that's what we're going to do. We are in this frickin' uh, Dustman's Crypt. And, I mean, it looks like we still have a long way to go to retrieve a fragment. This is like our uh, trial for the companions. We're supposed to retrieve a fragment of this sword, the Blade of Isgrimor. And <laughs> I am already fighting with... Um, freaking uh, inventory issues and we still have a, what looks to be a long way to go so I'm, I've had to be selective with what it is that I'm keeping and and, and taking uh, it's it's killing me man it's killing me but we're gonna go back into sneak and then I gotta tell you guys again thank you so much for your great comments you guys are being awesome great spoiler free comments uh, what made me think of your comments just now is uh, a couple of you have told me that um, I only build my sneak skill when I'm sneaking around enemies. Uh, so just sneaking in general doesn't do anything. I have to sneak around enemies. There's Farkas there, cracking me up. Come on, Skeever, really? What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> he has this look on his face, instant regret. He's like, I should not have done that. I mean, I'm going to take the skeever tail because it's an ingredient, and I've got a lot of ingredienting to do. Uh, so many of you told me that alchemy is really just a bunch of trial and error, so I need a lot of potions. Hey, how's it going, man? Ouch, man. <laughs> he went flying. Oh, hey, guys, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Come on, Farkas. Come on. One hit him, man. Come on. Gosh, Farkas, he took three bites out of you before you even... Did anything. I probably should not be using my awesome um, d uh, d axe on these things because every swing I take, uh, some of my magicness of my uh, axe goes away, and I shouldn't be wasting it on these freaking skeevers, man. Come on. Okay, we've got a little bit of a dead end here. Oh, can he fit through that hole? Oh, he, can, he can. He can fit through the hole. <laughs> Okay, thank you, dude. You saved me some magicka. That was so funny. He fit through that hole, man. Oh, I'm still, I'm still detected. So there must still be more skeevage around here. Skeevage, anyone? Skeevage? Hmm. What do you think, Farkas? Uh, we've got a door here that is going to take us this way, I guess. We've got ourselves an alchemy lab here. I mean, maybe I could stop and have fun with alchemy in, here in this place. I don't know. Let's do some Draugr searching. Uh, oh, man, look at that cool armor. Oh, I want that. That is some valuable armor right there. Well, I'm going to pick it up. Even though it gets me closer and closer to over-encumbrance again. But that was too... That was too tempting, man. I had to have that. Okay, good. All right, so those other joggers had nothing on. Here's a door we could unlock if we look on the map. Uh, we'll see this is just a little room. Let's go ahead and use our novice lockpicking skills to get in here. 
Nice. Oh yeah, we get ourselves a potion of minor healing. Uh, inside of this urn, we get some gold. And um, I guess that's it. Okay, well. Just um, this little closet there with some stuff in it. I mean, I could do some alchemy here, uh, maybe? I mean, will that really help with weight? I mean, maybe a little bit. Um, okay, let's let's do some stuff here, man. So, um, the problem is, if I make potions, don't potions weigh something? So, is it possible that I'll actually be making myself more encumbered if I do this? So, damage stamina takes a bone meal, a spider egg, and blue butterfly wing. That's... That's that weighs less than one unit, right? Uh, a damage stamina potion itself, if I make it, now I've made a potion. Oh, I've discovered some effects too. Okay. Um, I didn't already know these effects. Okay. Anyway, so now I've taken. I've reduced my weight by 0.8, right? Because now I have nine of these, six of these, and two of these, right? But instead, what I've done is now I have a potion in my inventory that weighs, um, I thought I made a damage stamina or a damage, what did I just make? Well, anyway, I guess it doesn't matter which one. Okay, so I <laughs> I saved myself 0.3 weight. Because potions only weigh 0.5, so indeed, it doesn't really make any sense, because you would think whatever liquid I need to make the poison would weigh more than the ingredients itself. But making poisons or making potions actually does reduce your weight. <laughs> Not a lot of things make sense in alchemy, I guess. Damage magic a regen. I could make two of these. Uh, now this will increase my weight, because I'm going to 0.3 to 0.5, eh? Uh, so we craft this. Craft that again. Damage stamina. Make these. Oh, we've leveled up. These are only worth 30. Fortify conjuration. These should be worth quite a bit, right? Why can I not select lavender? What's going on? Um, wait a minute, this, I still have, okay, hold on, let me, let me uncheck these, select fortify conjuration, so, <laughs> you know, just when I feel like this is starting to make sense, something like this happens, fortify conjuration, I think is telling me that I need these ingredients, so why is lavender grayed out? So I, I don't... I mean, is lavender an ingredient I need for Fortify Conjuration or not? If it's not, why is it over here? And if it is, why is it grayed out? But... And now I can't pick it. Um... Fortify Conjuration. Is this telling me... Why is spider egg chosen? I guess because I still have spider egg chosen over here. Okay. Make sure you unchoose things before you choose something over here. Okay, let's see if this works now. Okay, good. All right, that makes sense. Uh, this one's worth 53. I was kind of hoping that since it was a three ingredient potion, it would be worth more. Um... How do I... I guess I don't know how much something is going to be worth until I actually select all the ingredients. It's, it's, it's cumbersome. That one only is only worth 32. This one is worth 14. Not that I'm only going to sell these. Here's the Restore Stamina. That, even though it's three ingredients, is only worth 17. Jeez. Huh. Well, that sucks. Um... But yeah, I don't know. Fortify Conjuration. I mean, I don't even use Conjuration, so this would be a potion that I would be crafting just to sell. But again, it's only worth 53, and I'm only going to get about a third of that when I sell that to an alchemist. So, 
I should probably be uh, doing some... Um, well, I, I wish I had a Restore Magicka instead. That's what I wish. But I should be making myself some Restore Health and some Restore Magicka potions, I feel like. So let's just go to Ingredients and uh, combine some things with Red Mountain Flower, maybe. Red Mountain Flower does Restore Magicka, huh? Um, so, I mean... I mean, I have this Bleeding Crown that I have no idea what it does, so let's go ahead and throw that on there. And then Blue Mountain Flower. See, now that I've selected these two things, I can't see what Blue Mountain Flower does. Blue Mountain Flower, Flower does Restore Health. It'd be cool if I had a potion that restored health and Magicka. Let's try this. Let's craft this. Okay, that didn't do anything. Uh, but I've been told that's okay. Purple Mountain Flower. Or Red Mountain Flower. No, wait a minute. Yeah. Red Mountain Flower. We're going to mix that with uh, Skeever Tail since I have a lot. That doesn't make any sense, though. I'd have a Restore Magicka and a Damage Stamina Regen? Um... Troll fat. I only have one of those. White cap, and then we'll throw um, I don't know a skeever tail on there because I have so many of them. Oh, look at this one! I created a potion of restore magicka. Exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, discovered effects. White cap gives us restore magicka and ravage magicka. Uh, Red mountain flower gives us ravage magicka. Skeever Tail gives us damage health, and Red Mountain Flower also gives us damage health. So we created a potion of Restore Magic. It's not worth a whole lot. Um, restores 22 points of Magicka. Concentrated Poison temporarily reduces maximum and current Magicka by 9 points for 10 seconds. Damages target's health by 9 points. This is another thing I don't quite understand. What's the target? Am I the target? If I take the potion, am I the target? That's what I don't understand. Restores 22 points of Magicka. That would be my points of Magicka, wouldn't it? Concentrated Poison temporarily reduces maximum and current Magicka by 9 points for 10 seconds. Okay, that makes sense. So, I could get 22 points of Magicka, but it reduces it by 9 points for 10 seconds. Then damages the target's health by nine. That's what I don't understand. Am, am I the target? I mean, I, I guess I would have to be, right? It's a potion. So, I mean, I guess I could just drink this at some point and see what happens. So anyway, I just thought I would stop there for a moment and do a little bit of alchemy. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. What are you doing, dude? Get up. <laughs> Why are you still walking like that? I'm standing up straight. Why are you still crouched? Get up fine, do what you want, you know, you just, you, you Farkas, just be you, okay? Um, so I have a couple different directions that we can go in now. We could go this way. This looks like a dead end, though. Yeah, this is a dead end, okay. Search this burial urn. I'm taking it, man. Potion, gold, two of my favorite things. If you ever want to know what to get me for my birthday, uh, potions and gold. That's what I want. Okay, let's move forward. Get back into crouchy mode. Hmm. Okay. Okay, there's a little path there. Alright, I'm gonna look around a little bit. See if there's like a chain on the wall or something that I could pull. See if there's anything like hiding. There could have been something hiding in that little corner there. Um... I wonder if I could see through here. Let's see, the direction I'm looking in is a direction I haven't been in yet. We can't get through there, so I guess I need to go, maybe go around this way, huh? Let's try that. Oh, here's another little window we could look through. But I think that's the little... Well, I don't know what that is. Is that trying to tell me that I'm missing something? No, that's just where we came from. Oh, this is the little window we looked through when that skeever came out and said hi to us. Right? Farkas is like, oh my god, make up your mind, dude. Which way are you going? He's getting a little impatient with me. Okay, let's move forward now.
This is neat. This is all windy. Oh, hi, Skeeves. What's up? Hey, uh, Farkas, take care of him for me, will you? I'll let Farkas get a disease. Come on, Farkas. There you go. I'm just trying to save my magicka. I'm going to let him take care of the wimpy stuff. Oh. I think I saw another skeever. <laughs> Gross. Gross, 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 gross. Gross. Oh, gives me the creeps, man. Oh, serious case of the heebie-jeebies. Search the frostbite spider. Get me some frostbite venom. Ooh, look at this guy. Desiccated corpse. Oh, some lockpicks. I'll take those. Take the venom. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I might have gotten some effects maybe on me right now. Um... No. I'm not looking at the right place. This, These are active effects. Uh. Okay. Cool. I was like, why do I have resist frost? Well, my Nord blood gives me 50% resistance to frost. That's pretty freaking cool, right? And then I've got all these things just from the stuff that I'm wearing. So. I have the blessing of Talos. Time between shouts is reduced by 20%, but... This is only going to last for another 47 minutes, so I don't know when when and where did I get this blessing of Talos, I don't recall. Yeah. It was cold in here. Thought I'd heat that up, warm it up in here a little bit. Spiders. Uh, now, uh, spiders are good. Uh, generally, when I see a spider in my home, if it's not too big and hairy and scary, I'll leave it alone because spiders are good for killing more annoying creatures. This is the way I came from, I guess. Uh, not creatures, but little insects and stuff. So I normally leave spiders alone, but they do, they do creep me out, man. something over there? I'm not sure. We've got a little bit of water here. Oh, that is somebody standing there. Sure is. Somebody with a club. Looks like. Uh, I do see that I have a level up available. And I'm remembering now that I was supposed to do some research to see... Hey, how's it going? It's a restless Draugr. He's, he's feeling a little restless. He wants to come over and fight us. <laughs> Look at Marcus. <laughs> Uh, so funny. Oh, hey, how's it going? You're making me angry. Boy, that fire is not doing a whole lot, so let's see what uh, lightning does. Oh, I'm still in fire. Okay, there we go. Here comes another one. He's shooting arrows at us. What's up, restless Draugr? I'm going to take your gold just to add insult to injury. Interesting. So I can have I can do both things at the same time, I'm just now noticing. Interesting. So Okay, let me switch to this weapon. So I got this weapon in both hands, right? This weapon in both hands. Now I'm gonna switch to fire. And it looks like I got fire in both hands now. And now I've switched to lightning in my left hand and fire in my right hand. Oh, my sneak has increased. Hey, dude. He's like, hey, guys, what's going on over here? Well, let me show you. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Okay, let's do that. Take the arrow, I guess. Whatever. Uh, so now I have lightning in my left hand and fire in my right hand. And if I choose lightning again, now I have lightning in both hands. Interesting. Okay, I did not know that was a thing. Hmm. Um, let's see here, and then four is my battle cry, which I haven't been using. I need to remember to use that at some point. Uh, I don't know why that's, like, selected there, though. Five would be healing, and then six is the clairvoyance thing. Okay, this is very interesting. So if I wanted both, there we go. 
Whoa. Okay, I did not know this was a thing. Look at me. Got fire in my right hand, or fire in my left hand, and lightning in my right. Look out, bad guys. I mean, I would have to think it would use up my Magicka twice as fast, but if I could kill enemies more than twice as fast this way, it's uh, certainly worth it. Anything over here? I don't see anything. That's too bad. That would have been a good place to hide something. Let's look at the map again, see where we're going. Going down this way. Still got a ways to go, man. How far away is this freaking fragment? caved-in area here. Can maybe look through here. Is that you making all that noise, Farkas? What are you doing over there? I think Farkas needs a moment alone. Oh, this is kind of neat. Look at this stuff on the wall here. Look at this. I think there's even a gem there. Can I take it? I want the gem. I guess I can't take it. I want it, though. That's neat. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Huh, what's going on down here? Any druggers want to wake up and say hi? Hmm? Druggers? Hmm? Anyone? No? No druggers? Uh, I'm taking your gold. And, um... I'm going to take your gold. You can keep the hunting bow. I'm talking about I hate it when I do that. You can keep the hunting bow. Uh, you know, I'm feeling generous today. We got some hanging moss here. Harvest the heck out of that. Another Draugr. Uh, I'm going to take the gold and you could keep the rest. Is that more hanging moss? It sure is. I don't know if I know its effects yet. Get some white caps over here. We just now made a potion using those, so it's good to pick more of those up, right? I thought maybe this was some uh, laying on the ground moss instead of hanging moss. We got this a door here. Take that. Take the gold. <laughs> Um, and, okay, we've got a door. Could be scary. This could be a scary room. Oh, we're getting close to the fragment. I think it's F5 time. I think it's time to hit F5. Oh, boy. What do you think? We're gonna have to fight a boss, aren't we? Oh, music's changing a little bit. Is it gonna be like one big boss, or is it gonna be a whole bunch of droggers or something? What do you think? I'm not sure. I'm kind of nervous. I'm kind of nervous, man. So, uh, I'm going to look at my inventory. I've got, um, potion of, I've only got, well, I've got a potion of regenerate health. Health regenerates 22% faster for 300 seconds. And then it damages the target's Magicka by three points. Again, does this mean it's going to damage my Magicka? I don't want that to happen. I'm going to need my Magicka. Okay, here's a potion of healing. Restores 50 points of health. And then a potion of restore health. Restores 22 points of health. Potion of healing. 50 points. Potion of restore health. 22 points. Okay, so we're going to favorite this... And then we're going to slap that into slot number six. Uh, clairvoyance wasn't six, but I don't need clairvoyance right now. I just need to be able to get to six. I have potion of minor healing here, too. i got a whole bunch of those. But this is the one that hurts my Magicka, isn't it? Right? Potion of... No. This one restores 25 points of health. Well, that's not bad. So that one could be useful as well. Let's bring this up. 
We'll put this in slot 7, which is kind of a hard slot for me to reach reliably, but we'll give it a shot. Yes. Okay. Alright, I'm going to F5 it again now that I've done that. Now my sneak isn't showing anything. i got some place up there that enemies could come from. This is what I've come here for. Before I go to that, let's make sure that nobody's going to come from over here and surprise me. No, this is looking pretty okay. Search the urn. Take the gold. Okay, well. What is going on? I'm so paranoid, man. Oh, I've been detected. What have I been detected by? Who detected me and where? Who is it, Farkas? Do you see it? Who detected me? Something something is eyeballing me, man. Oh, gosh. What, what is eyeballing me? Something saw me over there. Yeah, something saw me over here. When I walked over here, I was detected by something. And, I mean, I don't think that Farkas counts as detecting me. Search this chest. Ooh, a circlet of magicka. Increases your magicka by 30 points. Yes, indeed. A bunch of gold. Um, and then... Take the petty soul gem. Okay. Good there. I want to put that circlet on. So let's bring up our inventory. Circlet of Magicka increases your Magicka by 30 points, man. That's that's impressive, I feel like. That's a lot of points. So let's go ahead and look at my character now. If I go here, we can see that my Magicka is currently at 120. And, okay, I've leveled up. That's right. I forgot that uh, leveling up... Yeah, let's go put more into Magicka. Put more into Magicka, so now my Magicka is now at 130, and I still haven't decided what I want to spend my points on uh, in here. Do I want to go uh, more Destruction? Uh, do I want to go into Restoration or Alteration? Um, and then there's another one like Illusion or something that seems kind of interesting. Yeah, Illusion seems interesting. Uh, and then Conjuration might be interesting as well. I need to decide what I want to do here. But anyway, my magic is at 130. And if I put on this circlet... Ooh, I just took my helmet off? Oh, so either I put on the helmet... Which gives, gives me an armor rating of 86. Or I put on the circlet of Magicka. Holy cow, which reduces my armor rating all the way down to 63. That's a big difference, man. Ooh, I don't know, man. That's a big difference. I mean, these things are going to be taking a big bite out of my health when they hit me, yet I'll have more magic. I, you know what? I kind of feel like I need the armor. I feel like that's more important. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Alright, Farky. Let's do this. Ooh. Okay, we got some potions here. We got some gems. We've got the fragment of Wuthrad. And then we've got that thing over there, which I think is related to shouts. I'm going to take the fragments. Completed retrieve the fragment. Return to Yorvaskar. There's no way this is this easy. Okay. Word of power learned fire, comma, fire breath. Okay. Alright, what do I do with it? I learned a word of power. <laughs> it cracks me up. I learned... Oh, there's something moving around down there. There's an enemy down there, I think. It's not showing up as a bad guy on my compass, though. Oh, oh, no, it's a... Oh, <laughs> you know what I almost said? Oh, no, it's a floating sword. No, there's somebody holding that sword. 
Um, so, um, magic, um, okay, we've got favorites, we've got all, we've got a battle cry, so I guess this is, oh, targets flee for 30 seconds, so those words, I mean, here's unrelenting force, where is that thing that I just learned, hmm? Here we go, fire breath. Oh, okay. Hmm. So this one's grayed out. Um, I don't know why it's grayed out. Um, maybe because I need a dragon soul? I think I need a dragon soul, don't I? In order to absorb this or something? I think. Oh, by the way, I did read the manual for this game. There is a manual out there. I did read it. It told some stuff, uh, and I think I remember reading about needing a dragon soul to absorb these things, so maybe that's what's going on. So, I'm gonna F5. There's a dude, that they're waiting to fight us. Let's do this. Oh, there's a bunch of dudes. Oh, there's a, there's a bunch of dudes down here. Ah! Got one dragon. Somebody hitting me from behind? Oh, there was a dude that came up behind me, maybe. Oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, he is pissed. <laughs> You're the one who's running away. Oops, he's already dead. I don't want to accidentally hit uh, Farky. He's running away! <laughs> oh, hi. Ouch. Oh, I'm out of, uh, Magicka. Comes back fairly quickly, though. Anybody else want some of this? Oh, hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, what's up? This is also very exciting. I'm glad you come to my party. So he's yelling something. I guess they're using shouts. Are you dead yet? Two-handed increase. Got rid of him. Nice. I'll tear you to pieces. Go tear him to pieces, man. Do it. Farkas is fine. He's okay. He doesn't really need my help. Any more? Oh, 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 oh. Here comes some more. Okay, took care of him. Oh, Farkas. Time to finish this. I agree. Look out behind you, dude. Oh, there's something more coming from over here. Oh, this is starting to get bad. This is starting to get bad. I got your back, man. Oh, he's hitting me pretty hard. I gave him that. Let's go ahead and take a potion. Or no, heal myself. Hmm. Did I heal myself? Maybe I didn't. So this is my... And my left hand is my heal potion. Or not heal potion, my heal spell. Um, but I, I tried to heal myself. Okay, I'm healing. Okay. But look at my magicka drain as I do this. Okay, I healed myself. Probably didn't need to. I probably would have gotten my health back anyway, but... That's okay. Let's go ahead and do some searching. Let's start up here, you know, and uh, we'll just do some searching here. And uh, we'll see what these Draugrs have as gifts, the what gifts they brought to my party. Whoa, he disappeared! Whoa, I didn't know they disappeared. Oh, crap. I didn't know that you only had a certain amount of time. Crap, man. That guy could have had something really good on him. Shoot. Could have had a freaking Garnet on him, man. He just disappears? What the hell, game? I mean, this is, this is my reward. Man, I gotta rush. I'm gonna miss something. So many of them. Nothing that uh, my good buddy Farkas and I can't handle. Oh, I accidentally picked up that other thing. Damn it. Now I'm over encumbered. Hold everything. Hold on. Hold everything. We gotta drop that thing I just picked up. Get out of here. Get out of my inventory, you. 
Okay, this guy. Gold. You. Gold. Gold ingot. Gold. Gold. Bone meal, gold, ingot. Well, I guess ingots caught or weigh something, because now I'm over encumbered again. Boy, Farkas, I really wish that you could carry things. Uh, let's talk to him. See if he has anything to say now that we've completed this. We need to get back to your Vasker. Oh, okay. I don't like that these are now... It looks like I haven't asked him these questions. They're not grayed out. But, I mean, I have already asked him, asked him these things. All right, then. Yeah, all right, then, indeed. Um, I mean, I need to drop something else. I wish I could drop this stupid pickaxe, but uh, no. Uh, I guess I'm going to drop this orcish bow. I mean... I don't know. It's worth 150 though. Uh, let's look at all of my stuff. And the thing that I'm carrying that weighs the much, the most, is my steel armor and my axe, and then this bow. But uh, in, order, in order to get under my weight, I really need to just drop something that's worth one. Um, I need to get a house so I could put my books away. I don't want to drop books, man. I want to. I want to. I want a library in my house. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Uh, so in that case, let's drop, um, goat hide. Let's drop that. It's only worth five. Okay, there we go. Now I'm no longer over encumbered. Well, I do believe I have looted all these dudes, except for that one that freaking disappeared up here. Probably the most important one of them all. I don't know. I have nothing to base that on. I'm just, just complaining. So we have to go back to your Vasker now. Uh, this quest, um, return to your Vasker. I mean, I could fast travel back there, but I don't want to fast travel yet. You know, this is this whole world. There's still so much to explore and learn about. Oh, cool. The door opened up over here. Neat. Look, that's neat. We don't have to go all the way back through this place. We can just walk out. Awesome. Very excited about that. Back to Dustman's Cairn we go. Yeah. What's our map look like now? Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> Go through here. There's a lever here. I like levers. Let's activate it. Levers are exciting. Yeah. Uh, pardon me. Coming through. And this is the way out. This is where we came in. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. This is so awesome. All right, let's exit here. Go back outside. And then uh, we'll walk back over to... Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Mafala is the Daedric Prince of Lies. Oh, I was I was told to uh, read those uh, loading screen things, but um, they load so fast I really don't have much of an opportunity to read them. Um, yeah, but I was just getting ready to say that um, White Run isn't that, or Yorvaskar and White Run, they're they're not that far away. There's that wolf we killed earlier and a little fox running by there. Look how beautiful this is. Look at that. And the sound effects are real nice. You've got the the wind a blowing. It's really nice. Well. Let's go back, Farkas. And you could judge me. Is that a... No, it's not a wolf. Let's, um, let's go, man. Let's just walk on back. Let's have five it <laughs> Before I run into another Argonian. It's one of the most magical things about Skyrim. The world of Skyrim. That you can... Save and reload... Stop and pick a little bit of this up. Hey, I think the thing just ran into me. Kind of pushed me aside. Butterflies. I think I got it. Where 
Where'd you go? I don't think I got that one. Did I get it? Yeah, I guess I did. I don't see it flying around anymore. Good job, me. Good job, me. So, um, these uh, mammoths, I've been told that if they have, like, carvings in their tusk, then they are kind of, like, owned by a uh, giant. And this one does appear to have carvings in its tusk. Okay, here, here, here. It's okay, it's okay. Got a little too close. It's, it's okay, I'm leaving. See you later, bye. But at some point, I do need to uh, try to take down one of those dudes. Uh, because I need to get a tusk for somebody in Whiterun. Yeah, we've got a giant standing over there. I don't know if you can see him. He's standing right by the fire. All this mammoth cheese. Yeah, another. there's another uh, giant over here. Listen to this beautiful music playing. Hey! How you doing, giant? How's it going? Run back in third person. Check that out. Can I back away from myself? I can. Check this out. This is pretty neat, huh? Farkas hanging out with us there. I like it. I'm really, really, really enjoying this game. I mean, way more than I thought I would. Not that I didn't think I wouldn't enjoy it. on it. <laughs> Just pick that stuff up and now I'm over encumbered. <laughs> uh, uh, what can I drop now? Uh, I'm going to drop this ale. I don't need to be carrying this crap around. There. Drop some ale. There. Some, somebody will find some ale here on the ground. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, this is a game. So, I'm playing like Golly, what, four different games right now? Uh, I'm playing this. I'm still playing Fallout 76. Uh, I'm still playing Control. And then uh, every day I stream Greedfall Live. And those are all good games, don't get me wrong. But uh, man, when it is time to play this game, I am excited. I was like, yes, it is It is time to play some Skyrim. I am having fun with Skyrim. It's no fun getting pushed around all the time. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I've been looking for you. Whoa. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. What is it? Let's see here. Ah, a letter from the Jarl. Moving up in the world, eh? Looks like that's it. Got to go. Hmm, okay. I just got a letter from the Jarl. I didn't see anything go in my inventory, but... Nope. Sorry. Nothing. Got a letter from the Jarl. Well, I mean, I'm getting ready to head back to the Jarl. Um... Is it a... Miscellaneous? Um... I mean, I guess I could just look in here and sort by name and look for letter from the Jarl, but, um... Here it is. Letter. Is this it? This is a different Jarl. This is the Jarl of Falkreath. Yeah, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Huh. I'm sure I'm glad it doesn't weigh anything. Let's read it. Speak to the Jarl Falkreath. Mental Fox, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sidgir, and I have the honor to be the Jarl of the proud and ancient city of Falkreath. The fame of your exploits across Skyrim has brought you to my attention. If you are interested in becoming a Thane of Falkreath, a, F a Thane of Falkreath hold, I invite you to speak to me the next time you are in Falkreath. Aside from the honor that accrues to the title, my thanes are entitled to a personal house carl. I also can tell you privately that a choice parcel of land in Falkreath would be available for your purchase. Should... <laughs> I thought he was going to go to me for free. Uh, would be available for your purchase should your services prove useful to me. I look forward to meeting you in person. I remain Jarl Sidgear of Falkreath. Can I be the Jarl of more than one place at a time? I bet I can. I'm just gonna... Not the Jarl, I'm sorry, the Thane. Can I be the Thane of more than one place at a time? I imagine I can be. And why not? Alright. 
Back to White Run we go. Hey, yeah, we're making a name for ourselves quickly, I feel like. Most shops are open from about 8 to 8. If a shop is closed, wait until morning. What are you looking at? You guys... Oh, you want me to tell you which one's uh, taller? Oh, that was me. God. Vampire hunters or something. In the old fort near Riften. Might consider joining up myself. Okay. Uh, started Dawnguard. Oh, he just gave us a little quest. Speak with the leader of the Dawnguard. You should talk to Adrian at the forge. Okay. So he's just giving me random stuff to do. Hmm. All right. Uh, so supposedly there's a couple of places here that I still have not you visited. Have. The Dawn Guard is looking for anyone willing to fight against the growing vampire menace. What do you say? Hmm. Okay. Well. Um. Let's see here. Uh, what is the Dawn Guard, dude? Tell me about it. We're vampire hunters. We search out and destroy those blood-sucking scum wherever we find them. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, um, I can't say I've really noticed a, a vampire menace, except for that cave I went into. You're not paying attention, <laughs> then, like almost everyone else around here. Haven't you heard that the Hall of the Vigilance was destroyed by vampires? They never took the threat seriously, and now they paid the price. Vigilance? Dawnguard? What are you talking about? The Vigilance mostly hunt down Daedra worshippers, which is why they got torn to pieces when they went up against vampires. That's why our leader, Izran, is re-establishing the Dawnguard. Real, serious vampire hunters. Okay. Well, um... Well, where do I sign up? Ha! Izran's going to like you. Go talk to him at Fort Dawnguard, southeast of Riften. We'll decide if you're Dawnguard material. Okay. So what are you looking at, dude? Okay, so let's see. Right here is a blacksmith that we haven't uh, talked to yet. And uh, over here is a guard barracks I haven't been into yet. And here is the drunken huntsman. I have been in there. I think there's still a couple of buildings that I haven't been into yet in White Run. Uh, we will take a look at those in the next episode. I'm going to end this one here. Uh, but before I go, it is time to read another book. So those of you who are not interested in listening to me, me read, feel free to go ahead and end this episode. But the rest of you, uh, stick around as I read the, um, let's see here. Um, I was kind of curious about this Argonian account, because we ran into an Argonian before, and he beat the crap out of me. So let's go ahead and read Argonian account, book one by Wogan Yarth. Or maybe Wan Yarth. I don't know. I think this is the same guy that wrote that book we read last episode, I think. Let's see. Last episode I read A Dance in Fire. Yeah, same person. Okay, cool. Alright, we are going to read an Argonian account. On a minor but respectable plaza in the Imperial City sat, or perhaps lounged, Lord Venetch's building commission. It was an unimaginative, austere building, not noted so much for its aesthetic or architectural design as for its prodigious length. If any critics wondered why such an unamorn golly, such an unornamented, extended erection held such fascination for Lord Vanetch, they kept it to themselves. In the 398th year of the Third Era, Decimus Scotti was a senior clerk at the commission. Well, he's the guy that we just read about in that last book. It had been a few months since the shy, middle-aged man had brought Lord Venich the most lucrative of all contracts, granting the commission the exclusive right to rebuild the roads of Valenwood, which had been destroyed in the Five-Year War. For this, he had become the darling of the managers and the clerks, spending his days recounting his adventures more or less faithfully, although he did omit the ending of the tale, since many of them had partaken in the celebratory Uthrapa roast provided by the Selenstri. Informing one's listeners that they've gorged on human flesh improves very few stories of any good taste, okay? Scotty was neither particularly ambitious nor hardworking, so he did not mind that Lord Vanetch had not given him anything to actually do. Whenever the squat little gnomish man would happen upon Decimus Scotty in the offices, Lord Vanetch would always say, You are a credit to the commission. Keep up the good work. 
In the beginning, Scotty had worried that he was supposed to be doing something, but as the months went on, he merely replied, Thank you, I will. There was, on the other hand, the future to consider. He was not a young man, and though he was receiving a respectable salary for someone not doing actual work, Scotty considered that soon he might have to retire and not get paid for not doing work. It would be nice, he decided, if Lord Vinetch, out of gratitude for the millions of gold the Valenwood contract was generating, might deign to make Scotty a partner, or at least give him a small percentage of the bounty. Decimus Scotty was no good at asking for things like that, which was one of the reasons why, previous to his signal successes in Valenwood as a senior clerk for Lord Atreus, he was a lousy, lousy agent. He had just about made up his mind to say something to Lord Vinetch when his lordship unexpectedly pushed things along. You're a credit to the commission, the waddling little thing said, and then paused. Do you have a moment free on your schedule? Scotty nodded eagerly and followed his lordship to his hideously decorated and very enviable hectare of office space. Xenathar blesses us for your presence at the commission, the little fellow squeaked grandly. I don't know whether you know this, but we were having a bad time before you came along. We had impressive projects for certain, but they were not successful. In Black Marsh, for example, for years we've been trying to improve the roads and other routes of travel for commerce. I put my best man, Flesses Tiho, on it. But every year, despite staggering investments of time and money, the trade along those routes only gets slower and slower. Now we have your very clean, very, very profitable Valenwood contract to boost the commission's profits. I think it's time you were re rewarded. Scotty grinned, a grin of great modesty and subtle avarice. I want you to take over the Black Marsh account from Flesses Tiho. Scotty shook as if awakening from a pleasant dream to hideous reality. My lord, I couldn't. Nonsense, chirped Vanesh. Don't worry about Tiho. He will be happy to retire on the money I give him, particularly as soul-wrenchingly difficult as this Black Marsh business has been. Just your sort of challenge, my dear Decimus. Scotty couldn't utter a sound, though his mouth feebly formed the word no, as Lord Vinetch brought out the box of documentation on Black Marsh. You're a fast reader, Lord Vinetch guessed. You can read it all en route. En route to... Black Marsh, of course, the tiny fellow giggled. You are a funny chap. Where else would you go to learn about the work that's being done and how to improve it? The next morning, the stack of documentation hardly touched. Decimus Scotty began the journey southeast to Black Marsh. Lord Vinetch had hired an able-bodied guard, a rather taciturn red guard named Malik, to protect his best agent. They rode south along the Nibbon, and then southeast along the Silverfish, continuing on into the wilds of Cyrodiil, where the river tributaries had no names, and the very vegetation seemed to come from another world than the nice, civilized gardens of the northern imperial province. Scotty's horse was tied to Malik's, so the clerk was able to read. It made it difficult to pay attention to the path they were taking, but Scotty knew he needed at least a cursory familiarity with the commission's business dealings in Black Marsh. It was a huge box of paperwork going back 40 years when the commission had first been given several million in gold by a wealthy trader, Lord Zelicles Pinos Ravina, to improve the condition of the road from Gideon to Cyrodiil. At that time, it took three weeks, a preposterously long time, for the rice and root he was importing to arrive, half rotten in the imperial province. Pinos Ravina was long dead, but many other investors over the decades, including Pelagius IV himself, had hired the commission to build roads, drain swamps, construct bridges, devise anti-smuggling systems, hire mercenaries, and in short, do everything that the greatest empire in history knew would work to aid trade with Black Marsh. According to the latest figures, the result of this was that it took two and a half months for goods now thoroughly rotten to arrive. Scotty found that when he looked up after concentrating on what he was reading, the landscape had always changed, always dramatically, always for the worse. This is Blackwood, sir, said Malik to Scotty's unspoken question. It was dark and woodsy, so Decimus Scotty thought that a very pro appropriate name. 
The question he longed to ask, which in due course he did ask, was, What's that terrible smell? A uh, slough? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Slow? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Uh, some kind of point, sir, Malik replied as they turned the next bend, where the umbrageous tunnel of tangled tree and vine opened to a clearing. There squatted a cluster of formal buildings in the dreary imperial design favored by Lord Vanetch's commission and every emperor since Tiber, together with a stench so eye-blindingly, stomach-wrenchingly awful that Scotty wondered suddenly if it were deadly poisonous. <laughs> the swarms of blood-colored, sand-grain-sized insects obscuring the air did not improve the view. Scotty and Malik batted a batted at the buzzing clouds as they rode their horses towards the largest of the buildings, which on approach revealed itself to be perched at the edge of a thick black river. From its size and serious aspect, Scotty guessed it to be the census and excise office for the wide, white bridge that stretched across the burbling dark water to the reeds on the other side. It was a very nice, bright, sturdy-looking bridge built, Scotty knew, by his commission. A poxy, irritable official opened the door quickly on Scotty's first knock. Come in, come in quickly. Don't let the flesh flies in. Flesh flies? Decimus Scotty trembled. You mean they eat human flesh? If you're fool enough to stand around and let them, the soldier said, rolling his eyes. He had half an ear, and Scotty, looking around at the other soldiers in the fort, noted that they all were well chewed. <laughs> One of them had no nose at all to speak of. Now, what's your business? Scotty told them and added that if they stood outside the fortress instead of inside, they might catch more smugglers. You better be more concerned with getting across that bridge, the soldier, soldier sneered. Tide's coming up, and if you don't get a move on, you won't get to Black Marsh for four days. That was absurd. A bridge swamped by a rising tide on the river? Only the look in the soldier's eyes told Scotty he wasn't joking. Upon stepping out of the fort, he saw that the horses, evidently tired of being tortured by the flesh flies, had ripped free of their restraints and were bounding off into the woods. The oily water of the river was already lapping on the planks, oozing between the crevices. Scotty reflected that perhaps he would be more than willing to endure a wait of four days before going to Black Marsh, but Malik was already running across. Scotty followed him wheezing. He was not in excellent shape and never had been. The box of commission materials was heavy. Halfway across, he paused to catch his breath, and then discovered he could not move. His feet were stuck. The black mud that ran through the river was a thick, gluey paste, and having washed over the plank Scotty was on, it held his feet fast. Panic seized him. Scotty looked up from his trap and saw Malik leaping from plank to plank ahead of him, closing fast on the reeds on the other side. Help! Scotty cried. I'm stuck! Malik did not even turn around, but kept jumping. I know, sir. You need to lose weight. Dekima Scotty knew he was a few pounds over and had meant to start eating less and exercising more, but embarking on a diet hardly seemed to promise timely aid in his current predicament. No diet in Nern would have helped him just then. However, on reflection, Scotty realized that the Red Guard intended that he drop the box of documents, for Malik was no longer carrying any of the essential supplies he had had with him previously. With a sigh, Scotty threw the box of commission notes into the glop and felt the plank under him rise a quarter of an inch, just enough to free him from the mud's clutches. With an agility born of extreme fear, Scotty began leaping after Malik, dropping onto every third plank and springing up before the river gripped him. In 46 leaps, Decimus Scotty crashed through the reeds onto the solid ground behind Malik and found himself in Black Marsh. He could hear behind him a slurping sound as the bridge and its container of important and official records of commission affairs was consumed by the rising flood of dark filth, never to be seen again. <laughs> Interesting stories here. I have to wonder why they included so much detail in these stories. It's just such a rich world that they've created here, and I'm really enjoying being in it. Hope you guys are too. If you're enjoying following me along, let me know, leave me a like or a comment. Thank you so much for watching. I sure do hope you join me again in the next episode.